In this conclusion uh, of the course, Location Enabled Digital uh, Government Transformation, we will, would like to provide you with the overview of the key result, the key findings, key conclusions of the different modules uh, of this course. In this slide, we show you the key elements we've discussed throughout the different modules of the course, a course that talked about location enabled digital government, uh, which in fact refers to the transforming the shift from a traditional government into a location enabled digital government, where location data, location technologies are used to enable more efficient uh, and effective services, also cross-border and cross-sector services, which in the end provide benefits to citizens, businesses, and government. And for that, we identified three uh, key building blocks or key three main ingredients. We talked about digital transformation, we talked about location data and technologies, and we also talked about interoperability and location interoperability uh, in particular. And putting these three ingredients together, should allow or should enable the shift transformation from a government towards a location enabled digital government. That's what we discussed throughout the various modules. Now let us have a closer look at the key uh, conclusions on each of these uh, different uh, elements or each of the different modules. So this just shows you once again, the modules or the core modules of our course. We had four core modules before we had an introductory uh, module or introduction. We also have this part of the course, which is a conclusion. The core modules consisted of a module on digital government transformation, a second module on location data and technology, third module focused on location interoperability, and the fourth module, which really looked at location enabled digital government transformation. We talked first about digital government transformation, uh, saying, uh, showing you that this uh, transformation towards digital government could be considered in the wider context of the evolution or the realization of a digital economy and a digital society of which digital government was just one element. It's not only about digital government, it's also about digital businesses, digital citizens. And also, although each of these are, are a bit differently, there also are strong links between these three. And therefore, it's important to consider them all together. Now, when talking about the transformation towards digital government, we talk about the realization of government that really fully takes advantage of data and technology in creating, optimizing, and transforming public services. Also important to be aware is that underneath these services, we have the actual, you have a lot of processes, processes in which different governments, but also other actors are working together. Now, so when we are talking about transforming our services, it's also important that we are aware about the need for changes, the need for innovations in these underlying processes. Second module of our course focused on location data and location technologies. This model, in fact, showed uh, how location data and how technologies could be, could be used for answering different types of where questions. Where questions that we are all confronted with in our daily life, but where questions that are also extremely relevant, extremely important in many different sectors, many different fields of applications. Location data, in fact, they allow to provide a model. Uh, they, are, they provide, in fact, a model of our real world, while location data our location technologies, they allow to uh, allow users to create, manage, analyze, and visualize location data. Uh, the third module of our course was about location interoperability. In this course, we first looked at Europe, the European interoperability framework, since in fact, location interoperability strongly builds further on this uh, framework. Uh, location interoperability is about exchanging location information and also take into account the legal, organizational, semantic, and technical aspects. Now, in this module, we also showed the particular uh, challenges that exist at the uh, semantic and technical levels when we are talking about location data and te location technologies. So on one hand, there's an element of the European interoperability framework that is extremely relevant also when talking about location interoperability. But on the other hand, we also focused on the particular challenges when talking about location data and technologies. The fourth module of our course really talked about or brought together these previous three models to talk about location enabled digital government, explaining what this, uh, what this government is about in the sense that location enabled digital government is a government that fully takes advantage of location data and technologies for improving its public services, improving its policies. 
By providing you uh, different examples, we really showed how this location-enabled digital government provided or results in benefits to citizens, businesses, public administrations, and society as a whole. Also in this, um, in this uh, fourth module, we showed the many different challenges that needs to be addressed when we want to realize, we want to implement a location-enabled digital government. It's not only about uh, integrating location data, it's not only about transformation, it's not only about interoperability, no, also other challenges, such as, for instance, the ethical aspects should be taken into consideration. These should be further exp explored, and we should make sure that uh, the people involved or the people that should know about location-enabled digital government also know about how to deal with these different challenges. This figure, in fact, summarizes our course. We already introduced this figure uh, in our first, I think, in the first module of our course, showing the transformation of a digital uh, towards digital government. Now, important is that we can also add the location element or the location dimension to this uh, picture by seeing not only an evolution from back office ICT over web presence, online services, e-government tower, digital government, but also by looking, by linking these evolutions with the evolution in the way governments are dealing with location data uh, via, the use of, uh, via the use of paper and raster maps first, which involved our GIS systems, spatial data infrastructures, location enablements, and in the end, gold, a location intelligent digital government. Where, loca where location is an inherent element of government's functioning activities. Location intelligence, which in fact division or end goals, means that data access and data sharing are no longer considered as issues or are problems, but are already well management because we have a location enabled government. A location intelligence means that our government are no longer operating silos, but are really functioning as an integrated and a fully location intelligent government across different domains and across uh, and beyond, also beyond government, also working closely together with other stakeholders in order to tackle problems, challenges in, an, in the most, uh, most intelligent uh, way as possible across departments, across borders and across sectors. Now, this also brings some challenges with regard to interoperability, another central element of our course, where we see that different levels of interoperability of different interoperability challenges need to be addressed. So also in our course, we talked first about the technical, semantic and legal organizational interoperability, which are relevant, I mean, which need an, an integrated interoperability governments, governance. But here we also see when we really talk about location intelligent government, as part of a digital economy and society, we really need to think well on how can we integrate uh, the different services and how can we governance this integration of many different public services. So this concept, this figure in fact visualizes the core concepts of this course that we've introduced throughout the different modules and shows how they are uh, related to each other. Finally, what is next? Now we already introduced these six roles before when talking about the EULF blueprints, and we want to use them again here because we need, we think when, talk, when looking at the future and when looking at how can we provide guidance, how can we make sure that different people involved in this, in this transformation tower digital governments uh, can go ahead and can have the knowledge, the, the, the knowledge that they need. We think it's important to be aware that we are talking or that we are dealing with many different people all with a different role or a particular role in this shift transformation tower location enabled digital government. So we've identified different roles and we believe it's important to not only provide guidance, but also to realize a transfer of knowledge to each of these different roles, which probably, which all of them need, have their own needs. They are looking for particular knowledge, particular skills. In that context is important or it's good to refer to some existing initiatives that already really work on this knowledge transfer on, on, on different issues, uh, different topics, our different target groups. On one hand, there are the Interoperability Academy, which we already provide several interesting online courses, including one, for instance, on the European Interoperability Framework, which we introduced in the third module of this course. On the other hand, there's also the ELISA action, which not only provides guidance, but also has a specific series of actions dealing with knowledge transfers, transfer through various uh, activities. Many of the courses mentioned in this course are further explored, are further explained uh, in, in some of the resources of these different um, actions, while others still need to be further explore, uh, explored. 
So we already talked about data ethics. That's, for instance, really a topic that is uh, receiving more and more attention. Let's think, but we need to think on how can we make sure that we also realize a transfer of the required knowledge on this topic. And this also applied to many other um, more recent, more emerging topics. So if you would like to know more about uh, these topics and other topics related or relevant to location enablement, please have a look at the material resources available at these and probably also other uh, resources and uh, platforms. <laughs>